Hello everyone, and thank you all for joining me again for another Sheptech video here on the Zone Delium server. So, we've got plenty of stuff planned for today. I want to jump right into it all. First off, I've expanded our storage a little bit, and some good friends of mine left me a sign. Aren't they sweet? Right, moving right along. Last time, we were busy knocking out some advancements. Let's see where we left off. I believe we're about to knock out the storage upgrade. And we're going to get uh, this line finished off with water barrels. I've gone ahead and prepared some materials for today. Now you might notice we have a new crafting table. It's a little bit different than the last one. For one, our rock's got a comfy bed now. The other nice thing about this is that uh, this particular workbench, pick it up so you can see it, is the Work Stump Mark II. This thing is really handy because you can place multiple items in the slots. And making this isn't even all that difficult. But we'll get out of the we'll get to that one later. First off, we wanted to get ourselves some primal chests. Blue one first, and that's dark land oak in the corners. Like so. Chest in the middle. Regulars in the cardinal directions. Hit it with a rock. And there we go. Then, to upgrade this, all we need is a bit of bark. Well, before I do that, I should probably just show you what it looks like normally. This is the basic primal chest. Nine slots of inventory space. Nothing amazing. Once we upgrade this, advanced one. We have a bit more space, but, you know, it's not, not quite a full chest yet. Still very disappointing. Anyway, I actually kind of prefer these just because I can look at them from a distance and be like, oh, that's my sapling chest. I don't even need to bother looking in that one. Or, oh, there's them on my blocks. Said that. We'll, uh, we'll pop this right over here for now. All right, so that one's done. What's next? I believe we wanted to knock out barrels. Nope, not that one. So, the water barrel is pretty simple. Logs along the side. And a slab at the bottom. And we have a water barrel. Now, we can take our fluid bladder, if I had it on me, which I don't, it's right here. And we could pick up water and deposit it back into the barrel. But, in order to be able to move the barrel once we have water in it, we're going to need a lid. Like so. Now... I really like that noise. You shift, right click, and it picks up the barrel. Too easy. Pop you down right there. All right, where are we going to next? The dark gem, that's gonna take a bit more work. So we'll skip that for right now. Now, leather, I had already gotten the achievement for because it got dropped on me. But we're going to go over the process for making it now. So. Let me uh, clear out my inventory real quick, and we'll get right to it. And here we are, at my favorite spot by the ocean. So let's get started with making this leather. First off, I already showed you that you can turn pelts into rawhide. 
this rawhide, we're going to have to soak in salt. We've got our salt. We've got our fluid bladder. Now, when doing this, you're going to want to come to an ocean or river biome because it's the only place that water sources will regenerate. The little pool behind our house won't. So, if I tried to do it over there, we'd ruin the nice aesthetic. Now, whenever I do this, I always look for these little weeds right here. These aren't real things in the world. They're added by, let's see if I can use it, F8? Yes, better foliage. So, if I set that to false, they disappear. But, I like having them on. And it's a good indicator that there's right correct biome. I know generally that if I pick up water in this spot, allow for server lag, it'll regenerate. So then, we're going to be making some salted hide. Like so. So then, to make this, we can do it in our base crafting window. And it is going to set our fluid bladder up here for a moment. I'm going to shift click it down into my inventory and close. And it's going to put the fluid bladder back in that same spot it was. So I can just sit here holding shift, right click to pick up the water, E to open inventory, click, 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 and just like so, repeat the process. Click, click, click. Those materials will always return to my heart hot bar in the same location. So I know as long as I keep my cursor right here, I'll keep going back to it. Too easy. This is a pretty long and arduous process, but this is the only way to do it in the early ages. And honestly, it doesn't get much easier until the late ages. But now that we have the salted hide, well, we need to set it up to dry. To do so, we need drying racks. These bad boys right here. It's simply three slabs in a row. And these things work by setting them up there, waiting two minutes, and then the salted hide will turn into the dried hide. We then want to turn the dry hide into wet tanned hide with some ground resin, water, and the dry hide. Now, resin we get from bark. We stick this in our little grindstone, It'll mash up into two resin for each bark. So, once again, I plop these on my hot bar. Grab my water. And get that set up in the corner for easy clicking. Now, because I'm using different materials, it organizes my hot bar when they go back into it in a different way. So, just for that, but now once we know what it is, it'll always be the same. Too easy. Well, yes, this is a slow process. This is the best way i found to do it. And since we're here at our water source, and we got our barrel set up, Let's fill her up. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that's a full barrel right there. Now, as I said before, once you fill these things up, if I shift and click it, I can pick it up and move it around. But if I want to travel with it, I need to stick the lid on. Like so. Take the lid off, you shift and click on the lid, pick up the barrel, shift and click on it, and it's an inventory item. Since water is always handy to have nearby, I'm going to fill these bad boys up and take them home with me. Alright, back at base. So now, we we'll talked about the drying racks. First off, we make these out of slabs. 
Now, a good thing to keep in mind. There is an item rack. Let's see here. This bad boy, which is just two slaps. It basically does the same function of holding an item as a drawing rack does, but doesn't have the functionality of it. So then, stick this here. Grab our salted hide. Plop her down. Now in the later ages, we're going to get the Wayla mod unlocked. Which is going to put something around the top of my screen where you see that ground item clear thing going off. And when I look at this, it'll actually tell me the time remaining on it. But for now, we're just not advanced enough. However, I can tell you that those, th those things take exactly two minutes to dry. You can tell by going over here, hovering over, hit uses, and clicking on the drying rack. This will tell you everything that you can put on it for some effect. Now, monster jerky seems like a good thing to use your rotten flesh for. Don't do it. Rotten flesh is far more valuable. But if you don't feel like cooking your meat, you can use it to uh, turn into jerkies. Most meat types will. Slime as well, of the various types. Blood. These are actually great healing items. I've never used these. Don't know what they're for. Didn't even know they did that until I checked this one out. Ah, here's how we make paper. And then fish. And there's our leathers. Two minutes. All right. So I went ahead and made a bunch of these. Now, you can hang out more than just the drying stuff. I can put basically anything on these racks. And they're a great way to just store stuff out in the open if you don't want to keep it in a chest. Tools, molds, other things in the various ages. These things are useful all the time. Just, you know, don't store your meat on there if you don't want to turn it into jerky. So, let's get the rest of this stuff set up like so. Now, the wet tan tide actually does have some uses in the later ages. I'm actually going to keep this on me. Oh, and our first piece is finished drawing. So, we'll go ahead and uh, convert these over into our regular leathers soon enough. For now, let's put that away. Alright. Next up, once we've got our, our wet hides fully dried, they turn into basic leather. I've already ha gone ahead and makes a, made some ahead of time. The next thing you can do with leather is you can use your, whoop, it's over here. You can use your work blade on a piece of leather and it turns it into cordage. like so. Now the leather strips have no purpose other than being turned into leather cords. And you do this by combining them with string. Once you have these, the next thing I want to work on is going down this tree and getting all of these horse powered presses and choppers and whatnot. But to make any of that, we first need to be able to make leads. So, leads are pretty simple. Simply, ooh, wait. If I can mess that up. Lead is simply cordage in the center, string on the corners. Now, the thing I really dislike about cord, leather cordage, is that it acts the same way as plant twine does, but plant twine doesn't work the same way it does. So you have all these recipes that say, oh, use leather cordage for this. No, you use plant twine for it. I really wish they had distinguished that a bit better. Anyway. So I'm going to plop all these in here. And then we 
got nine on either side. And then grab our crafting rock. And there we go. Next thing on the list is going to be the horse-powered grindstone. This is six smooth stone, stick and two leads. So, looks like we're actually going to need a bit more smooth stone. Before that, we're going to need a bit more cobble. Darn here, I thought I was so prepared. All right. Be right back. All right. I got our stone. We can get back to work. So then, six stone on the bottom, lead, lead, stick, hit it with a rock, there we go, horsepower grindstone, oh, I'm sorry, getting night out, and it's only just beginning, darn, well, we'll get to this later. Next up in the tree, we have chop, chop, chop. So, the horse, char uh, horse powered chopping block. Easy enough. Stick, log, couple of leads. So, lead, lead. Already forgot the recipe. Flint and the oak log. Like so. That's one more down. You see that little uh, grid pattern showing up? I'll show you what that does later. Last up, the horse press. Just easy. Slab, planks, lead stick. Doot doot. One of these. I don't have any spare slabs, so let's get some slabs instead. Try that again. This we need to press charcoal. No, easy enough. Well, that's gonna take way too long for daytime to come around. Oh, but this actually gives me an opportunity to do another project. So, if we look at our advancements again, we were working our way down this line. Next thing after the lead is the TP. The TP is super simple, it's just sticks and leather. So, in order to make this bad boy, sticks in one shape and leather in the other direction. Like so. And this is our first bed. The problem with the TP is that it has to be placed on a grass block, like so. But once it is, we can now use this as our bed by clicking on the center block inside the TP. All right, and we've slept the night through. And of course, we got a zombie that wants our attention. And a couple of them tried to sneak up on me. 
Trixie Hot says, I'm wise to your ways. Of course, I'm not quite as wise to the server lag. Oh, God. Need to take my boots off. I can't crit these guys with the jumpy boost boots. That's a good name for them. Jumpy boost boots. Anyway. Moving along, now that it's daytime, we can plop these bad boys down. Now they require a fair amount of room in order to function. You mentioned this little grid pattern right here. This is showing me where I can place it and if something like, for instance, this wall gets in the way, or those flowers, I just adjust, plop it there. If I hold the lead and look at it, it'll show me the area in which this thing functions. That little green path right along here is where the horse is going to walk around. So we may just need to make sure that that area is clear. Next up, we can grab our horse press. I'd like to get this lined up just about so. And now these shouldn't overlap. Yep, perfect. Five blocks apart. And then the last thing is the grindstone. Now this has to be one block up. So before I put this down, I'm actually going to go ahead and make a hopper to put under it. Let's grab some string. We need to make ourselves cobweb. Or do the hopper. Clear out my inventory a bit. Put that there. I ended up making an extra hopper at some point for some reason. And bark. There we go. Oh, and um, let's eat some food before we die horribly. That's really a good idea. Now then. <clears throat> One, two, three, four, and four. So it's going to end up going right here. I want to go ahead and place this hopper down facing that way. We'll put our chest right there eventually. And let's get the grindstone. Ah, not in the hopper. There. Okay. I'll grab my shovel. This is my offhand. Well, it still, yep, it still shows it. And out this grass around the area. There we go. And the area is clear. Let's get rid of that flower. That flower. Creeper, you have no power here. There we go. Okay, next, we're going to need some horses for these things. And luckily, I live in an area full of horses. And creepers, apparently. So, using our awesome little zoom key, you can see that I have apparently slaughtered all the horses in this immediate area. Right. Well, I'm sure there's some right over this hill. And we're picking up flowers in the way. Now, you can use just about any animal that can be attached to a lead to run these horse-powered devices. I actually often use dogs to do it because they are slightly faster than horses at this particular job. You stubborn horse. You also have the advantage with the dog, you tell it to sit. 
and it will just sit <laughs> and walk around in that area, and it is hilarious. Can, can I get on the horse? Ah, here we go. We have a horse. All right, grab my lead, and you're coming home. I probably will end up converting these things over to dogs. But for now, let's do this the way nature intended? Something like that. Plus, you know, having a horse on hand is... Oop, got too far away, broke my lead. Having a horse on hand is, you know, always handy. I swear I'm not trying to be this cringy. Okay, and there's help. Try not to run him over any Venus fly traps or cactuses. Killed many a horse doing that. Come on, you sure are a slow pork slow poke for a horse. Ah, and it broke again. It's not really the horse's fault. There's a bit of server lag today. Come on, Mr. Horse. Almost there. Just a little bit further. And I think we needed to put him on the press in order to finish that off. Finish that shield off. There we go. Alright. And now we were going to... Uh, I think we had to press up some charcoal. Is that right? Press charcoal into a large block using the horse hard press. All right. So we look over here. Charcoal block. In the press, nine regular charcoal. And to get that charcoal, we can grind up the low grade charcoal. And that's just a couple of logs in our kiln. One of the few regular uses this thing has. So, grab ourselves some logs. We're going to end up needing about three of these. That's one of the issues, well, I guess not issues, one of the challenges of Septech is that Anything that converts into a block form by, say, a nine by nine, or excuse me, a nine piece recipe, as in a three by three, generally speaking, all of those require something like the press or some variant of it in order to convert them. You can't just put the block into your crafting window and break it apart. Honestly, most of my time spent on the Subtech server is just converting blocks into ingots and then ingots back into blocks for storage reasons. But well, that's the way they like it. Ah, oh, and I used it on the fire. Dang it. I shouldn't keep that so close. Do, 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 do. There we go. Hold like so. More grindy. Grindy, grindy, grindy. Alright, one to go. Ah, last one. I did have a whole bunch of other things planned, and here I am getting sidetracked. Oh, what's that saying? No plan survives contact with the enemy. I'm trying, guys. I am. Alright, grab our coal. Charcoal. <clears throat> Alright. And we plop her in there. And then the horse just starts going. He knows what to do. He's waited his whole life for this. Now, we can help him along by turning this all into path blocks. And he'll actually move faster. Oop, and I jumped on him. There. He'll move faster on the path blocks and thus increase the speed 
of our overall operations. Here we are. With any of these presses. So. Next up, what are we going to do? We got our teepee. I suppose we could make ourselves a sleeping mat. Man, it is getting dark out anyway. So. Alright. And it's about this time I realized my mic was muted the whole time. So, hopefully I fix that in editing. Alrighty. Get my berries harvested. What's next? So. We've got our sleeping mat. Next thing I want to go down is the totem tree. So. First off, we're going to need to craft a couple of items. I.e. the totem knife. So that we can make totems. And we're also going to need a drum. Which is simply a bit of leather, like so, and some planks. I'm going to go at Totem so I can see everything in the mod. We're after the Totemist drum. So, plop down a few of these and get our rock. And we have a drum. Now, the way totem stuff works... Is it dark enough to attack me? I don't think it is. Alright. To do totem stuff, you first need a totem pole. Which has a base, and then up to one, two, three, four totem types. So, we go to our totem whittling knife. It's set to base at default. We right click and it converts it into a totem base. It also converts it into oak for some reason. To do the different totems we need, hold shift and then scroll. Oh look, it converted back to birch. Must have been a I don't know, server lag thing. Anyways. Anyway, let's get a couple in here. Let's try a horse. I'm sure that'll update in a second. Uh, why not cow as well? Eh, sure, a buffalo. That sounds nice. And a yeah, bat. Sure. Cool. Totem pole. Now I'm going to place my drum down. And let's take a look at the advancement and see what it wants us to do. Craft the rattle, flute, and drum needed for totemic ceremonies. I don't need to make a flute and a rattle still. Now the flute... Get my inventory straightened out a bit. The flute requires a piece of grass. And you're going to need shears in order to do this. I made some out of bone and some plant twine. If I remember correctly, it's something like this and then that. Oh, I was wrong. Ah, one off. Like so. There's our flute. Next up, we need to make the rattle. And this thing requires jingles, which are just bones and reed. So, let's grab these. The reed is like that. Bone like so. And there we are. Get our stick. I should keep this in my inventory. Rattle. 
gave us the advancement and Totempedia. This book will tell us how we do all the various rituals. Now there are some other instruments that we can make as well. For instance, the jingle dress. Three jingles and three string. There's also an eagle bone whistle and a totemic staff. This isn't actually an instrument, but it does affect rituals. So how about we make that dress? Clear out some more inventory space. So this thing required three jingles. jangle all the way and like so and we have the jingle dress this is actually more of a, a skirt because it goes in your pants slot but you might notice if I can get it to do it there saw a bit of a note go off let's see if I go into the third person and do this yep it'll play notes as you move around it's either done through jumping or through sprinting Alrighty. So now we have these things. We can do some rituals. And the first ritual it wants us to do is going to be the ritual of spring. And then after that, we'll work on getting ourselves buffalo. Because we need buffalo in order to make some of this stuff over here. But let's knock out this tree first. Except for making, maybe uh, doing uh, Bayak, uh, Bayak, I, I don't know, but uh, yeah, he's he's horrible, he's terrible, and I hate him. Like I, I fought him at like age five, and he still killed me, so uh, maybe not. Right, but anyway. Ah, and I forgot one thing. There's another instrument we can make, the wind chime, which is. Uh, these items here. So let's put down what we have in our inventory so far. String and a bow and two more reed. Yep, yep, yep. Memory is terrible. Bone there, I believe. The sticks up top. And a front. Where are my sticks? There are my sticks. One, two, three. And we need a flint. Alright. Got myself a gravel. This thingy. Flint obtained. Now, you want to make all of these instruments because different rituals require different instruments in order to function. For instance, many of them can't even be started without the drum, so you have to make that. Many of them also take the wind chime and the rattle or flute. The eagle bone knife, uh, eagle bone whistle, only like one or two, and I think that's uh, Baycock that needs that one. All right. Well, we have our instruments now. We have our teepee. I think, well, I think that's about enough for tonight. So, this might be a bit of a shorter episode, but I think we knocked out quite a bit for how long it was. I'm going to go ahead and uh, get some of this stuff cleaned up, get my horrible, horrible inventory straightened out, and uh, see about picking this up next time. But, until then, I've been Decca, and thank you all so much for joining me. Until next time, goodbye.